Hello and welcome to the Basics of Genomics. My name is Darren Todd. I'm the geneticist with the Hosting UK group. So genomics is about using information from the animal's own DNA. And that information is used to provide more accurate breeding information, particularly for young animals. And this information is used uh, to produce a full UK genomic evaluation, which is the most accurate information on production health and type traits available in the UK. Ultimately, we want to use genomic information to identify your best future herd. Just a little bit of background on cattle DNA. DNA is basically the instruction kit on how to make a cow. There are 30 pairs of chromosomes uh, containing nuclear DNA in each cell in a cow. You will see the chromosomes in purple on the right. And within these chromosomes, there are 3 billion separate pieces of DNA, if you like, called nucleotide base pairs. And these have the familiar names of ATGC. 99.9% of nuclear DNA is identical in every cow. So we're only really interested in the 0.1% that vary in cattle. These are referred to as SNP, single nucleotide polymorphisms, and essentially genomics looks at these. And the lab genotypes these SNP. Now, the SNP in themselves are not uh, that much use for breeding dairy cattle. So what has happened is that a SNP key has been created to discover the value of this DNA. And this has been done using tens of thousands of AI bulls, which have very high reliability genetic merit based on their daughter information, and which also have genotypes available. So this information has been used to create a, a UK SNP key to translate the SNP genotype into genetic merit data for us. Using this SNP key, we can estimate the genetic merit of young animals. So if we have a young calf and it's genotyped, and you have some pedigree information, the genomic evaluation can be calculated using the SNP key. And you'll see a typical genomic evaluation result on the right-hand side of the screen. One of the key statistics that's often overlooked in cattle breeding is reliability, which is quoted as a percentage. Reliability tells us about how much is known about the genetic merit of animals. Pre-genomic testing, here are some examples of reliability. Young animals typically are in the 20 to 35% range. So essentially, we tend to know a third or less about their genetic merit. A milking heifer typical figure could be around 55%, so you're getting up to half of the genetic merit is explained by the animal's parents and its milking information. Once cows get a bit older, the reliability does increase a bit, but it tends not to go much above 70%. When we look at bulls, a typical bull with 10 daughters would get reliability of around 65%. Once the bull has more daughters coming into his proof, then that would move up. 50 daughters would be around 85%. Just would be the equivalent of the old first crop proof. And then really, to get anywhere near the 99%, the highest reliability we can get, the bull needs to get up to thousands of daughters, such as uh, Pixton Shuttle down here on the right, for example. Now, that was genetic merit before genomic evaluation, now we can compare genetic merit uh, before and after genomic evaluation. So again, we look at our calf. If we think of a young heifer in this stage, pre-breeding age, no progeny, only information from her parents. You might hear the expression pedigree index, which is simply a calculation using information from the parents and grandparents. Again, as I said, reliability 20 to 35% typically. After genomic testing, this effectively doubles to typically 50 to 65%. So there's a big gain, and that's the big advantage of genomics. We compare that to milking heifer. 
will may have information from uh, classification, our own production. Again, as I said, typical reliability, 55%. After genomic testing, that does go up a bit, but not that much. So the gain is much smaller. You may gain 10, 15 percent of reliability. So the knowledge of her genetic merit does not increase dramatically. Similar with an older cow, again, after genomic testing, you may get a small gain. But this very much highlights the, the, the real value in genomic testing is of the youngest animals. This is an example of uh, a young female UK genomic evaluation result. And as we were talking about reliability, it's interesting to look at this in detail. There are several reliabilities quoted on this fact sheet. So the PLI for this animal is 55% reliable. The production reliability for the production traits is 67. And there's also a type reliability highlighted here at 53. So it's interesting if you're genomic testing to compare the reliabilities before and after testing. And that shows you the real value, the real gain you've made through genomic testing. So that was looking at individual animals. Now, this example shows us a herd, which is genomic tested 110 heifers, uh, which were born in 2018. On the left hand side of the chart, we can see the PLI and the reliability for that PLI before genomic testing. You can see that the PLI is quite spread out. And in blue, the top 25% of animals are highlighted. On the right hand side of the screen, after genomic testing, you can see that the main changes that have happened is the PLI is spread out a little bit and the reliability has gone up with the increased accuracy from genomic testing. And the key thing that's happened, if we look at the animals which are highlighted with the red arrows, is that 10 animals in particular, which before genomic testing were not in the top 25%, subsequently after testing are now identified as being in the top 25% of the herd. So again, that's a key benefit from genomic testing that you would not have known that before testing. And this is referred to as re-ranking. So this is a herd example of PLI. We're using PLI as an example trait, but this applies to any trait that can re-rank after genomic testing and gives you a more accurate picture of the merit of the animal. So just to recap, which animals to genomic test? Young calves, those we know least about the genom their genetic merit. In terms of breeds that can be done, dairy breeds, Holstein and Frisian, Ayrshire, Guernsey and Jersey, all have UK genomic evaluations, so they can all be genomic tested in the UK. It is recommended that animals be a minimum 75% purebred. In other words, the sire and the maternal grand sire be the same breed, or if you prefer the sire of the dam. That doesn't apply to Holsteins and Frisians. Any makeup of Holsteins and Frisians is fine. They are evaluated together. There is no point in genomic testing crossbreds. We've discussed the SNP key earlier, and these can be different across breeds. So it's not reliable to test a crossbred. As we've already looked at, once the female is calved and you've made this selection decision, there's less benefit from genomic testing and it's too late for older cows. So a summary of the presentation, genomics uses DNA information from the animal itself. The gain in reliability is really the key benefit from genomic testing, the increase in the knowledge of the genetic merit of the animal. Focus on testing young animals, before you make any selection decision on them, selection decision being whether to keep them as replacement females and also which bulls to breed them to. And once you have the genomic evaluation results, then base your selection decisions on those results. Thank you very much. For further information, you can contact the CIS using the following resources. <laughs>